And we're back, and it's uh, Comp 1011, and it's Advanced Object-Oriented Programming, and we're talking about building some Android apps again. Today we're going to do a little bit of a different exercise. Um, I've got a bit of a um, um, PowerPoint presentation we're going to follow. It's, it's, it's we're doing the calculator app. Again, we're following that, um, uh, the book that's called um, Android How to Program by Deedle and Deedle. Same kind of book, that we're, same manufacturer that made the other book. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing a little bit. I'm going to maximize this thing. Unfortunately, it's going to mess up my screens here, so I'm just going to kind of fix it because I'm using the newest Microsoft for uh, Mac, which is a pain in the ass so far. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to talk about linear, linear layouts and grid layouts. Um, we're going to talk about um, the outline window and all that kind of stuff a little bit more. We kind of saw it last week. We're going to go more into that today. Um, we're going to talk about how, we, how to use a text view and edit text, seek bar, all the things that you might want to use for your, um, your project, um, your little project that's doing a couple weeks from now. Um, so those kind of things. So how we can do interactivity between those things, those, those uh, components. Okay. Um, again, when we look at some of the stuff that we're talking about, and again, it's kind of hard to see here, but we do um, we we move our seek bar. This is the initial uh, UI. We move our seek bar from one to the next, and what happens is it changes our tip calculation for the amount that we're calculating. So, for example, our if the amount we enter up here is X number of dollars, it's a tip calculator, right? We're going to build. Um, if we if we increase the custom percentage of tip that we want to give, it's going to change the values in these orange squares. In a nutshell, that's really what we're going to build. Again, what we're going to talk about is when we look at the text view, right, each text view has their own custom properties. And we looked at this last time in terms of um, the property window on the right-hand side. So let's go switch over to Android for a second. I'm just going to pop into Eclipse. And again, hopefully you guys have your Eclipse operational right now. Um, Sometimes it's a bit of a chore to get it going, but once it's going, as long as you don't mess with it, we're pretty good. So let's let's try putting this little calculator app together, right, which will help us build the next one. Okay. It's going to render my image from last time. This first app is what we built last week, and we built a little bit, a little app with a um, a button, if you remember. And um, I'm going to pull down my my window here so we can see the view, right? Now, I'm using last week's app as an example just for a second. If you notice on the right-hand side here, we've got our outline. And this tells us the kind of layout that we have for each of the objects here on the app. We've got a welcome button. If I click on the welcome button, any button I click on here, I get a context-sensitive properties menu that comes up on the right, right? Here on the left, you have all your widgets and, and different kinds of controls that you can drag and drop here that you can start interacting with. Okay. So this is the kind of app we're going to build, right? I'm going to um, build another one. So I'm going to shut some of these things down. And we're going to start from scratch. And it's good for us to do this over and over again. Now, we found the secret <laughs> last week. And by the way, I, I talked to some of my colleagues. I told you I would, I would talk to people and, and find out what the issue is. There's still some issues experimentally with version 5 when you want to try and do app uh, Android stuff with Eclipse. If you're using Android Studio, however, some people have had more success with the latest version of Android uh, using Android Studio. But versions 4, one of the most stable versions is the one we chose, 4.2.2. So I recommend for the rest of this course we, we develop with 4.2.2, um, even though it's not the latest version, only because it gives us experience putting together an app for mobile. Right? So let's do that now. Let's try it again. So we're going to go File new Android application project, right? We're going to launch this thing. And again, I'm going to change all these options here to 4.2. Right, so here's 4.2, all of them, right? If we do this all, even if we get to the exam, and we choose that's the kind of exam we're going to do, and we do a little bit of an Android practical piece to it. And again, if, if we're talking exam now, uh, the last week, which is week 14, which is going to be worth 30% of your mark, Part of the exam is going to be a practical, a practical piece, and part of the exam is going to be a you know multiple choice question and answer, all that kind of stuff. It can't be all practical because um, there's got to be some terminology and things that we talk about that you're going to be aware of. We're going to be doing a review 
on week 13, right, for the exam, right? And we're going to talk about stuff that we're going to, we're going to I'm going to kind of almost do a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, think about terms and terminology we're going to talk about. I'm not going to be teaching anything beyond week 12. So week 12 and 13, um, we're going to be, I'm going to give you your, your assignment on week 12, and then uh, you'll have uh, 12, 13, and you'll, your assignment will be doing 14th, the final assignment, um, where you'll hand it in. So you'll have a chance to work on it week 12, the same day I give it to you. And week 13, there'll be kind of two work days that you can work on your assignment to get it done for week 14. Because I know you've got other stuff going on, so piling you on with more stuff and not giving you any work time, any work period, is bad. So that's why I'm going to make it so it's a work week for week 12 and 13. Okay. And usually, you know what? Here's another thing. I could certainly give you more material for week 13, but that's just silly. To give you a new material and then test you on it next week. That's like not done. Typically, we don't do that kind of thing. We stop giving new material around, um, you know, week 12 will be the last time we'll, we'll, I'll give you something new. And then week 13 is something we do a review, and then week 14 we do our exam. And it's all training for the exam that we're doing right here. Okay, so here's our new application project. I'm going to make this, I'm going to call this the tip calculator. So I'm going to say the tip calculator app, right? And, and it's not going to be example.com. We're going to use uh, Georgian College. Georgian College tip calculator app. Everything is 4.2 Jelly Bean, right? And if you notice down here, KitKat is 4.4, right? KitKat is also a very safe uh, IDE to use. We don't have 4.4 installed. We have 4.2. Uh, either Jelly Bean or KitKat for me would be fine. All right, let's go to the next one. This is API 17 we're using right now. Next. Um, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm going to go next, right? Now, Here's something different. Remember, we talked about this. Here's their default image. If you want to load um, an image set in here, like for example, I have uh, four or five different images. And if I want to uh, try and, and choose an image file, what Android will try and do is um, grab something that we already have and try and convert it so it fits. But typically what we want to have is these endings for all the files so that when we point to an icon, whatever the launcher icon is, um, there'll be different versions of it that we'll have access to as well. So there's a big strategy on how to do that. We're not going to cover it today. We're going to probably cover it another day. Okay? So for now, let's leave it as is. You can also choose clip art, like we talked about before. If I choose clip art and, choose, and click choose, like let's say, for example, I want to choose, it's a calculator that we're building, right? So this might be an appropriate piece of clip art, or this might be an appropriate piece of clip, clip, uh, clip art as well. So let's choose clip art, like this, this, or this. This is what my clip art is going to look like. So follow what my example is, if you can. The foreground color right now is blue, which I'm totally fine with. I'm not going to change that. Certainly you can experiment with this as well. The shape right now is, there's no shape. You can go square, and you can also go circle. If you want to try a circular app that has that kind of pattern. I like none, myself. And we're going to continue. Okay, so... There's some different activities here. We've only been experimenting with a blank activity. And chances are we're not going to explore too many of these because every one of these activities has additional layout controls that would be included within them. Like, for example, a, a full screen activity is slightly different than a blank activity. A master detail activity has a list view that's already embedded into it. Um, a tabbed activity has different tabs and uh, several views that are linked to it. So, again, there's several activities here. Let's go next. Okay, our main activity, again, typically our main activity is called whatever it's called. Let's leave our activity name the same, but certainly you can change our main activity and make it your own. We're going to click Finish. If everything goes well, and we follow the precepts of creating everything with 4.2.2, which is Jelly Bean, then our tip calculator app looks like it's good. And if you notice, now we've changed our, now that we've changed what it looks like, our um, icon, our launcher icon looks different on the top left corner as well. If you look at, now, I have a couple of AVDs that I've installed. You should also have them as well. I have the Nexus 1 and the Nexus 5. If I choose the Nexus 5, it's going to install this app, try to install it on the Nexus 5 AVD, the virtual device we created. And you can create virtual devices, just like as a review from last time, with this button here. There's the uh, Android SDK Manager. We, we installed all of our SDKs. Then there's the AVD the Android Virtual Device Manager that you can use to kind of create your virtual devices so you can test on them. Okay? 
So I have two. I have this 2.3.3 platform, and we have this other one that I, we were using, which is the 5.0.1, which works just fine. All right, so here's my Nexus 5, and this is what my app is going to look like now. Okay, if you notice on the right-hand side, we have a couple of layouts in our outliner. We have a relative layout, right, and we have a tab, a text view. A relative layout, we need some kind of container for our layout to be inside, right? Typically, again, we're to, with today's app, I think we're going to make, we're going to use a different kind of layout. Let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm just going to go to the next screen here. Um, it's talking about different ways of installing the grid or whatever. I'm just going to make sure that this isn't all like this. Every year when, um, yeah, they did do that. <laughs> Every year, what Deedle does is they upgrade their, their slides and their, and their stuff that they've given us. So what I'm going to try and do with you guys, there's an older version of Deedle that I'm going to bring up and I'm going to use that actually gives you step-by-step step, step step instructions on how to do this stuff. And I've actually found an older version that so works just fine, right? So bear with me while I bring that PowerPoint presentation up because this one's purely useless, right? Even after I've, I've uh, looked at it. So here's my previous content. And I'm going to go into this tip calculator app, and I'm going to put this up later on, up on Blackboard, so you can do it. You can try it at home as well. Now, the look and feel is going to be slightly different, but more or less, we're going to still have the same ability. We're still building a tip calculator app, but we're just going to use um, the different things here. Okay. And one day, thank you. Okay. So, um, we've, again, we can try and, and, and import the one that they've given us. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to kind of make it from scratch with you. I and mean, if you notice, these are the, the different piece parts we're going to use to make our tip calculator, right? It just explains what the tip calculator does, right? Okay, so we're going to use a table layout, which is one of the things that, you know, you've been asked to use for your... Um, your application that's coming up. And what we're going to do is, this is the one that we're going to build. We're going to kind of build this table of different things we're going to put into play. Right? Okay. And it, it really explains each of the piece parts. So when we put stuff together, each of these um, text views, I'm going to leave this up for you guys to see, each of them has a custom name. So when we drag and drop our um, uh, edit text, we're going to drag and drop them, and we're going to use these names. So I'm going to go back to this uh, file in a second. Okay? So let's start off. So we've done this piece already. Now, if you notice, the old version we used to use is 2.3.3 way back in the day when, we, when they did this first book. Uh, Android had a program. Um, so we've already done this piece. We've already picked this square here, and we've already picked the blank activity, right? Now, you, again, you can certainly choose your own activity. Now, they've called theirs... Uh, tip calculator, the activity tip calculator. We don't have to do that. We can call us ours main, right? Um, now it says we have to right click the main XML file in the project's res layout folder and select delete to delete the file, right? Now this is quite dangerous because let's go back and I'll show you what that does. And I'm going to just strap out of here for a second to show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the Eclipse, if you go to the main activity main XML, if I delete this file, what does it do? First of all, what does this, uh, this layout thing look like? We're actually looking at it right now. If you look at activity main.xml, it's all this stuff that we have in there, right? So when we delete this activity, we don't have an XML document. We have to create our own. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to explore how to do that step by step. Okay. Uh, just to make it simple, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to squelch back and forth here between these two activities. Um, I'm going to reorganize my, my desktop just a tad in order for me to do that. So I'm going to kind of uh, do one of these things where I'm going to put my PowerPoint presentation in this one and then switch back and forth this, between this and Eclipse. Okay, so um, let's take a look. So we're going to do that. I'm going to kind of pull up this PowerPoint presentation and bear with me again while I reset everything. Because it messes up my resolution. That's why I'm doing this. You guys can't see it, but I certainly can. Okay, so we're going to delete this file, this Android XML file. And the way we're going to do it is, in the node, we're going to select 
Android XML file and click Next to add it after we've deleted it, right? So let's do that. First, let's delete it. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to drop out of these, this mode where I don't see the activities, and I'm going to right-click Delete. Let's do that together. Don't be afraid. You can always create a new project, okay? I want you to build confidence in how to do this. So let's press OK. Okay, once we've deleted the layout, we've got to create a new layout file. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, New. We can right-click the layout, the layout folder, and go New Other to display the new dialog. All right? So Layout, Right, okay? And we're going to go New, right, Other. And once a dialog comes up, right, we're going to choose New XML Layout. It's going to be an XML file. Now wait. So when we say, now we should have a new XML file, that uh, Android XML file that comes up. That's the one we want. If we don't see that here, right, here's Android, Android XML file. Now it says Android XML file, and there's also Android, Android layout file. And if you notice, we've been asked to do an Android XML file. Okay, so we're just going to do this one. We're going to go next. And we're going to name the file. It says, where do you want to put it? It's inside of our project, right? And it's asking us uh, the, the new Android XML file, <clears throat> first of all, what the file is called and what kind of root element we're going to use. Okay? So again, if you look at our project, it says, we're going to go, um, we're going to use a table layout and we're going to call this thing main XML. That's what we're going to call it. Okay? So we're going to use, we're going to call this main.xml. And we're going to use a table layout here. Click down to the table layout, right, and then click next. Okay. <clears throat> That's too far. Too far, Tom. I love Microsoft. I love Microsoft. <laughs> it just like totally went, like sped ahead. <laughs> huh? It just like totally sped to the next level, eh? Like from nowhere. It's almost like I want to, uh, I want to hit it, and I know that, or I want to do this. I want to click the button because I think it's going to start, eh? Right? What do you think? Huh? I should do that. Click the button. Um. Let's go back to where we were. Sorry, I apologize. I want to make sure we're we're at the right level because the last thing I want is for us to um to miss something. Here we are. And really, this is a step-by-step -step guide for us because if we don't follow this guide, I made this guide like two years ago when I first did Android. Um, and it works just fine. I, che I checked it out at home. So if it works fine at home, theoretically, it should work fine here. Okay, let's go back. So we did this, and now we're going to click Finish. So go back, not to there. <laughs> we're going to go back to here and click Finish. So this prevent, presents us with a different view. If I go to graphical layout view, now I have a table layout here instead of a relative layout. Right? Do you see that? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Table layout. Table layout gives us different options. Okay? Okay. Now it says S SDK level 10, and they chose the Nexus 1. Of course, for us, it's not going to be SDK level 10. It's going to be SDK of the level that we've, we're using right now. And our SDK is not 22. What's our SDK level, guys? 4.2.2 is like, I think it's 17. And it tells us what it is. If I go to 17, this has got to change. This is de a definitely a key component to our, our, our uh, trouble here, because if we don't choose this to the proper SDK level, we're going to get widgets that don't match when we drag and drop, okay? So I got to choose that, and I also got to choose my, for my Nexus 1, I got to go by Nexus 5, because that's the one we're designing for. Okay, so SDK level 17 with a Nexus 5. That's totally fine. So we've got these tools available to us. Make sense? Okay. And that's one of the key components. Okay, we're going to select the table layout from the, from the layout, and in here where it says what the table layout's going to be called, right? If you notice, um, our table layout is table layout lowercase t, right? Right now, it's table layout. If I go to uh, layout parameters, there's no ID for it right now. If I go down here, see how we have no ID? 
we got to give us a, give ourselves an ID. We got to create an ID for our table layout, and you can actually type it in. The way you type it in, if you look at our ID, is you're going to type this um, table layout with lowercase t, just like that. And that should fix it. Now, if you notice here, if I do that, the best thing to do is put this at sign in front of it. If I go at plus ID forward slash table layout, that'll give us the right way of doing things. If you just type table layout in here, it'll be a bad thing to do, right? So this is the way you type in there. So go ahead and try this out, at plus ID forward slash table layout. So I'll do it with you. At plus ID forward slash lowercase t table layout and enter. Okay, and now this is what I've got here. If I look at the XML document, the XML piece, my table layout now is has an ID of whatever I typed in there. So you can actually do, there's two ways to develop your Android stuff. You can actually drag and drop and rename things in the GUI, or you can certainly use the XML view to, de to design what you want as well. The XML document is the document that tells um, Android where to place all of its controls. Okay. We also want to add our background, our background color. We want to make it FFF. So we make sure that that's correct. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to click, um, if I want to go down to background, right? And again, I'm going to look and see if I can find background. Here's background. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to choose FFF. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go my padding. If you notice my padding, I can put it in 5DP. It's going to complain when I do this, though. Why would it complain? We talked about internationalization last time. If I put stuff in here, hard coding like this, this only works for one kind of view. Whereas if I create a, um, a size class, basically, is what I'm creating, and we did it last time, what happens is you can reuse those styles over and over again for different views. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to put this, this number in here, stretch columns 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to go to um, where it says stretch columns right here. I'll, make, I'll open it up so you guys can see a little better. Here's stretch columns here under table layout. I'm going to put 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. And click away. Okay, I'm going to save this uh, layout change. All I'm doing is configuring the table layout. And if I go, again, if I go back to my main XML, you notice that all these things got added in in that order on the XML side, the document. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the table layout. We're going to click Add Row, right? And we're going to do this thing five more times. So we're going to do six rows. So zero, it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, just like that for the rows. So let's do that. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go right click here, add row. And we're going to keep doing that. Except one thing that I notice is if you don't see how, how row, our row starts off at, uh, um, at one. We don't want that to happen. We want this row to start at zero. We're going to rename them later, right? Because what happens is from a, um, a layout perspective, yeah. So we're going to start at zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if you notice how this first row says uh, one, we're going to rename it to zero. Table row zero. We're going to do the same thing for one. We're going to rename this to one. We're going to listen. We're going to uh, li uh, accept these changes, and then this is going to be two. Yeah. No. Well, you may. My luck, it won't. So I'm just doing it the way I'm doing it right now because I know it works. There's specific reasons why we do these things. Well, I'll go over them with you, with you in a second. First, let's build this thing out. Now, if you notice these rows I'm adding in, you can't see anything here, right? It's all compacted in here, right? So here, row five. Okay, 
So I've completed what it's asked me to do, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you notice, it says, since the columns are numbered from 0, rename the, the, the table rows ID property to table row 0 through table row 5. And that's what it should be, table row 0 to table row 5. Yeah, are you with me? Okay, it's very straightforward from now in. Okay, it says select all the rows, right? Right click and select layout width as match parent. So that's how we do it. So we go select all the rows, right click, and we go layout width as match parent. Okay, so now the layout width is equal to the parent width. It's creating this. So we're creating the layout. This is what we're doing. We've got our table layout, and we're adding rows to the table layout because we want this thing to be laid out properly, right? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to drag a text view, right, from the widgets, palette with the, the, and we're going to call this into table row zero in the outline window. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do, so a text view. So we're going to say, we're going to go here on this left side, and if you notice, there's a text view right here on the left corner. We're going to take this, this, uh, this text view. First of all, let's unclick all these ones over here. This is bad if they're all highlighted. Take the text view and drag and drop it onto the table row zero. When you do that, it places it underneath the table row zero. See how it does that on the outliner? It's a layer. It's another node within the, within the XML document. If I go to my XML document now, I'm just going to save this and I go to my XML document, it shows me how it's embedding everything here, right? Here's all my table rows, and if you notice, I've got a text view inside my table row, like this, okay? Okay, there's my text view. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the ID, right, to at plus ID build text view, right? So we're gonna do that right here. So instead of this regular text view here, we're gonna change this to at plus ID Build text view, and the build text view, I think, is lowercase b, build text view. And we say yes, blah, blah, blah. It's going to change everything. It's going to update our, our thing to build text view, see, build with a lowercase b. And we're going to say change our text attribute to build total. So we got our text attribute right here. Instead of text view, it's going to say build total. Right? There's a build total right here. Okay? All right, we're going to drag another one, a number decimal edit text from the palettes text fields, and we're going to select, we're going to onto the table row zero again in the outline window. So we're going to look over here, right, and we're going to look for a text view, right, under text fields, right. See these other text views, text fields. We have different ones, right. And if you look down here, if I click onto it. And see what which ones one they are. They show you different different numbers. One of them is this decimal, 42.0. You see that? The number decimal. That's a type of text field. So when you take this number decimal and drag and drop it on top of num, uh, table row zero again, and see how it becomes down here? It kind of goes right into the underneath the build text view. Right? So this is a um, a number decimal. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to rename it to bill edit text. And we're set this text to 0.0.0. .0, so bill, instead of edit text view, we're going to say to, uh, we're going to call it bill edit text, bill edit text, enter. We're going to accept all the changes, just like last time. And we're going to set the text value to 0 .0 0.0.0, or 0 0.0.0, .0. sorry, I'll be okay. Right? You guys should be up here like this right now. Are you following me? Trust me, if you do this one, it'll help you with your final one. It'll help you with doing your, your app, right? Because you need to do some of the same things here. Like I said, I'll put up this PowerPoint presentation later on today, so you'll have it. So you can always try and follow along if you, don't, if you want to do it later on, or if something's not working at home right now, and you're, and you're, you're uh, teleporting in with uh, TeamViewer or something else, um, we'll, we can do that later on. Okay, cool. And it says, note, for quick access to ID and text properties, you can right-click on the component in the outline window and select Edit ID and Edit Text, respectively. So what that means is if I right-click here, if I do Edit Text, I can actually type in my text value right here. Right? I can also go um, Edit ID, right? I want to do that right here. And it changes the ID to the new name here. 
So instead of actually typing in here into my properties window, um, people find it faster to do it the other way as well. Okay, let's do it again. Let's add three text views to table row one. And again, we're going to go one, two, three text views. Okay, so regular text views, they're the top left corner. I'm going to close this down again for text fields. I'll go to form widgets. Here's my text view on the uh, uh, right corner. So I'm going to go to table row one, one, two, three. Okay, so there's three text views. I'm going to pull this down a little bit now so you guys can see the, the, the layout a little bit more. So we're increasing our layout a bit. And see these little warnings here that I'm getting? How it says hard-coded string build total should use string resource. That's what I was telling you. Android, just like iOS, really doesn't like it when we hard-code strings. We want to keep in mind this internationalization idea where maybe today we're working in English, but tomorrow we're going to be working in Spanish or, or, or French or whatever. So they create these strings, these text strings, so that we can swap from one language to the other. Okay, so this is cool for now. So our text view one, we're going to click on text view one, and we want to change our ID to 10 text view and a, and a text uh, value of 10%. So 10 text view. So I'm going to go, I'm going to right click this time. So here's our ID. I'm going to say 10 text view. Right? And my, our properties are going to be, um, my text is going to be 10% from that run. Right, so, oops, sorry. So, and then the next one is 15 text view and 15% and 20 text view and 20%. So let's do those. So this is 15 and 20. So our, so 15% and we'll change the actual name of the ID. So 15 text view and this is 20 text view. And 20%. And we're going to mark, mark this one as 20%. All right. So we've got all these changed, these three. And we've done all that, just like they've asked. Next, <clears throat> we're going to add a text view and three edit text to table to table row two. Right? So a text view and um, and two and three edit texts, okay? And it says when we drag these three edit texts, uh, there are supposed to be number decimals again onto, onto table row two in the outline window. We're going to call them tip 10 edit text, tip 15 edit text, and tip 20 edit text. And they're all going to have values of zero. But for the first one, we're going to do this. The first thing is a text view. So let's do that. So a text view, and we're going to go to the next row. So a text view, I'm going to put that on there. So row two. And three edit texts, so go back to text fields, that are decimal edit text. They're, they hold decimal values. So three, one, right, two, three. Okay, so there's our three edit texts. Now, if you notice, some of them are appearing way out here. We have to fix them up. In a second, we will. So there's our three edit texts. And our text view is going to be called, um, the first one we're going to call tip text view with a value of tip. So edit our ID, tip text view, right, with a value of text, edit ID, or edit text, so tip. And the next edit text are going to be, like I said, tip 10 edit text, tip 15 edit text, and tip 20 edit text. So we'll do that. So tip 10 edit text to the ID. Tip 10 edit text. I'll change all the IDs first. Tip 15 edit text. And here is edit text. Tip 20 edit text. Right? And we'll change the values of each of these things to 0 .00. 000. 000. Edit text 0, 0.00 and the last one the same because all we're doing is we're initializing these values 0, 0.00. Now remember, even though they're decimals and all this kind of stuff, 90% of the time when we get values in from the user for any edit text that are on the screen, they're all strings. 
So we always have to think about converting them from what we see on, on line here um, to uh, string values. Sorry, I'll just turn these lights off. This is just bugging me. I, can't, I can hardly see. And if I can hardly see, I don't know how you guys can do it. Okay, cool. So that's where we are right now. Let's go back. Um, so we've done these pieces. The next one is we're going to add a text view, a seek bar, and another text view to table row four, right? Text view in this order: text view, seek bar, text view. Let's do that. So table row four. So let me actually, what I'm going to do here is just to make it simple, I'm just going to collapse these views, right? It says table row four, or table row three. Can we skip table row three. Hold on a second. We go one at a time. Yeah, we missed this one. Uh, or did I already add it in? Hold on a second. Table row two, zero, one. Did I do it to the wrong ones? What did it say? Hold on a second here. I know, I know, I know. Text view, decimal, table row one, we went text view, text view, text view. Right, table row two, did I skip one? Table row two, we go text view and three edit texts. And table row three, oh, I love how uh, um, Eclipse does this. You see that? It doesn't allow me to do that, to click into table row three. So I guess I didn't do table row three yet. Okay, so we'll do table row three again. Table row three, it's a text view and three edit texts again. But total 10, or oh, total 10, the other one was tip 10. That's why I was confused. So table row three we're going to do next. So it's uh, three more edit texts um, that we're going to put in there. And again, there, there are three edit texts that are decimal, number decimals again. So a text view and three edit texts again for table row three. Okay, so a text view, table row three. Oh, come on, man. This is why this is what bothers me about uh, Android sometimes. It jumps around like this. See this? Text view. Let's see if I can close this down. And three edit text. And I think it's because I'm I'm hovering over this thing. That's why it's challenging. It's the three edit text. So one. Yeah, see I know what's happening. So I'm trying to drag and drop, and what's happening is I'm passing over my my uh, layout. And it's trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. If I'm dragging and dropping here, right? So try and avoid the layout altogether and go above it or, or below it. So one, see, two, it opens it up anyway, silly thing that it does. And three. Okay, so I got to do the same thing, but instead of tip 10 edit text, it's going to be total 10 edit text if I'm not wrong. Yeah? Total 10 edit text, total 15, and total 20. Um, so let's go. And the first one, the first uh, one is going to be total text view, this, this first one here. So I'm going to edit the ID, total text view. And I believe the um, text is total for the first one. So here's our text total. And the next one is going to be <clears throat> total 10 edit text for ID. I know this seems weird, but it's actually a, it's actually the right um, way to do things, believe it or not. And I'm going to do the next one. Uh, the ID is total 15 edit text. And this one is ID is total... 20 edit text. Okay, cool. And I'm going to change the values, the IDs, oh, sorry, not the IDs, the, the text version, text values, to 0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0. 0 0.00 for each of these values. 0 .0 .0. 0 0.0.0. 0 0.0.0. Okay, so these are all, uh, table 3 is done. Are you guys with me? Table 3. I'm leaving this up, the design, so you can see what I'm doing. If you're an iOS person, by the way, 
iOS is very similar. They have an outliner just like this, right? I'm leaving it up so you guys can see both screens. You can see the what the what the values are. Um, they have an outliner just like this, and what you're doing with the outliner is you can set up subviews, which is what we're doing here, buttons and texts and edits and all this kind of stuff. An edit text is really an input box. If you go back to um, uh, C sharp rapid application development, it's just an input box, an input text, right? Um, or a text box is what it's called on um, uh, C sharp, right? That's what an edit text is, right? A, a text view is actually a label in C sharp terminology. So if you go to C sharp and you do an, a label, it's like a, a text view, the one we have here. So they're slightly different, one than the other. Okay, let's go to table row four now. Table row four, we're going to go to the next one. We're going to do a text view, a seek bar, and a text view in that order. So text view, table row four, seek bar. I believe that one there, this, this middle one here is a seek bar. And a text view. All right. Text view, seek bar, text view. The, the first text view, what is it called? It's called a uh, custom text view with a uh, text value of custom. So we're going to rename this thing, ID. So custom text view with a uh, text value of custom. Okay, the seek bar is going to be called custom seek bar. There's no other value, just the ID. So custom seek bar. And now the uh, third text view is going to be called custom text tip text view with a value of 18%. So custom tip text view. So here's the ID. Custom tip text view with a value of 18%. Edit text. 18%. Whew, we're almost done. <laughs> now, if you notice, there's actual things that are appearing here on the left, right? They're actually going, they're, out, they're outside of bounds right now. But we're going to fix all that in a bit once we reset the layout, right? Okay, are you with me so far? Yeah. Lane, you good? Yeah. Okay. Table five. This looks like a big one. Um, so we're going to drag. A text view, an edit text, a text view, and a number decimal, edit text. So the edit text, it doesn't say number decimal for the second for the second one, but I'm guessing because it has a value of 0, 0.00, it should probably be a number decimal as well. So the same thing we did. So text view, edit text, text view, edit text, um, and we're going to name them in a second, right? So text view, this is for number five. Let's we'll see if I can minimize some of these again. If it lets if it lets me. Probably not. Text view. And it didn't. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the biggest pain in the ass for me. When I drag and drop stuff from a from, uh, thing, it's like it's almost like I want to put this outliner on the on the left because it's just easier. So I'm gonna like I can drag and drop it and put it over here. Right? It's like I want to do that. But the problem is, see how it's not showing me the, the outline right now? It's like totally not available. And then I'm gonna to have to reset my views, right? Because I don't have an outliner right now, right? Uh, remember that if you ever want to drag an outliner in here, you can totally do that, and you can lock certain controls as well. I can come as close to the outline as possible and shrink this version up as much as I want because I don't really need this right now, right? And this is what's messing me up, right? Because every time I touch this thing, it's driving me crazy. So I can go like negative, 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 really low. And I can kind of zoom in as much as I can so that I don't even pass by this thing at all. So a text view, of course it does it anyway. It's so silly. And all this is doing is it's, it's doing content loading, right? right? That's all it's doing for me. Look. Let's see what it hop. Look, look how it messed me up, guys. It's totally silly. 
Now, see how this is what this is the problem. This is why people complain about um, uh, thing. Look at this. Look at these buttons over here. How they're all messed up. Do you see? Now it's back to normal again. Like you have these, these are constraints that are coming up that are showing you there's some kind of error with this, so this whole thing, right? And if you look at top here, it says, I've got my, my different things that I've mentioned, so I'm so far so good. Now I just need to add my text view again. Let's see if I can do this without, without errors. Okay, here's another question for you. How do I add things here? Can I add an object uh, object this way? Because I'm now I'm getting to my last table layout. How do I add? Can I add a? I can't add a row, and I can't add stuff in here to do. Right? I can't. It's hard for me to do it. Are you having the same problem as I'm having? Yeah, you should be having the same problem. And this is the problem with, like I said, with Android. One of the challenges that I've always had with Android is, um, and see how it's messing up now. I'm going to. What you need to do sometimes. I'm going to save everything, and I'm going to close my XML view down, and see how I'm getting a bit of an error? I'm going to double-click on my XML view again, go into XML view, right? And if you notice, I've got my table views all the way down here. It's going to show me my error, right? Now it says my table row, here's my table row, is aligned. This is table row 5, and if you notice, my table row is aligned this, somehow I've got this Android, here are my table rows, one of them is table row 4, and here's my table row 5, and I got this alignment baseline, I can get rid of this thing, this is my error right now that I'm getting. And I can actually physically change things here in my XML document and save it, and when I do that, of course, when I go back to my graphical layout, it's back to normal again, right? Or theoretically it is, anyway. Now it's not letting me change my, my workspace, funny enough. And this is the problem. This is when we start going nuts like this, it's almost like it's kind of a, um, it's a hard stop for me because I can't do anything. Once my XML document's messed up, right, if you notice, I don't know if you guys are having the same problem, and it probably means that something's missing from one of these, these rows or whatever. Right, because look at my table row. My table row has a closure here, and these ones have a closure here for each table row. But my my table row down here has no table closure, so I'm going to add one in because that's the kind of guy that I am to see to see if that helps out. Here's my text views, and here's this end of table row thing that I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of space up here to give myself more room. And I'm doing this thing in my, in my actual XML side, the XML document piece. Okay, go back to the graphic layout for a second. And again, I'm going to click on my row. This is my last row. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually drag and drop right onto the actual form. So if I go here and drag and drop onto the form itself, you should be able to do that as well, unless you have a problem like I do. Do you have a problem that I do that you can't drag and drop anymore? I cannot. I can't, even if I wanted to, I could not right now. And sometimes what I need to do, and I've had this issue in the past, is I've had to, I've had to physically restart my Eclipse because if I don't physically start my Eclipse, then I get some weird effects going on. Okay, so how do I add these things in manually? If I want to change my uh, main.xml, that's a good thing I'm doing here, right? So I got this. I know I need to use a text view. Here's my layout. It's telling me I need to do a text view, an edit text, and a text view, and an edit text. So I can do that. I can kind of go up here. I already have those. Text view, edit text, text view, edit text, right? And I can drag and drop them within my table row. Right, so here's my, um, now it says request focus, I'm not going to put that in there, but you see all these table rows, this is table row 0, and this is table row 1, and this is 2, and so on. If I take these two, like this, right, complete uh, table rows, copy them, 
and go back, or these, these views, and go back in here, right, as an example. Now, if you notice, this is the end of my table row for this one. This one, it ends here, right? And I've got the table row information up here, right, the header, and then I can embed in there, in some, into my XML, whatever I want, right? So I'm going to kind of go in there and copy and paste. And now I, I got to make sure I, before I save, I got to change these, these IDs to make sure they're correct. So I'm going to go back out and it says, um, it's going to be tip, custom text view, and a tip. I'm going to change this up. So it's going to say tip. And I got to make sure that I adhere to all the, all the, the, the craziness in here. Tip, custom, text view. And then it says tip, which is correct. And then the other one is, it says, tip custom edit text and zero, zero, right? So this is correct because it's already a decimal one, number decimal, tip custom edit text, edit text and zero, zero, okay? And one of my other ones, um, my, oops. Microsoft, I love Microsoft. Um, I got to go to my total custom text view and my total custom edit text. So that's what they're going to be called and the same kind of values. So, my, so I'm going to take these two things again here, copy them, and then go to the next line and paste. So you can do it also this way by hand. So instead of tip custom text view, I think it's tip total uh, text view. Let me just make sure. Total custom text view. Sorry, not tip custom text view, total custom text view. Total custom text view and total custom edit text. And the value is total and 0 .0 0.0.0. Total. Okay, and I'm going to put kind of control S for save. And by the way, it looks like I have an error in my code now. Do you see that? That I never had before. I had an error, now I have an error. In my main activity Java. On my on create. That I never had before. Everything was great. I was I was chugging. Right? And now of course I have this on create error. It says main activity, activity main in type layout. Doesn't know what that is. I never had that problem. That's because I, I failed to drag and drop properly. Did you guys have the same issue? I hope you don't. <laughs> I'm going to continue to chug on though because the idea here is we're making the graphical layout and it should look just like this. So here's my five. Here's my table row five. I actually put everything in manually using XML, which is actually a very good um, uh, practice to try and learn how to do that too. I'm going to close all this up for now. Okay, I'm going to move on, right? And that's not what I wanted to do. I want to move on, I said, and I'm going to go to this one. It says, at this point, the GUI should appear as shown, right? It's off screen and all this kind of stuff. It says, the bill, edit text, and custom seek bar do not yet span multiple columns. The text of all the text views is like gray and hard to read. Some of the components are in the wrong columns and so on. Uh, most of the text is supposed to be either center aligned or right aligned, whereas all the text shown here is left aligned. So this is where your, your view is all messed up is what it's saying. Okay. So to change the text uh, color property for all of the text views at once, hold control see, uh, and then and click each text view until they're all selected. And then locate the text color property in the properties window and set it to black under the text view color. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but I will try. So when I go to my text view property, I'm going to hit control and all the text views I'm going to hit all at the same time. And of course, it's not control for me on the Mac. Let's see what it is on me, for me on the Mac. Maybe it's command. Yes. On the Mac, it's command. So it's text view, text view, text view. Just the text views it's saying. Text view, text view, 
and we have a custom text view and this one text view and these two text views. And then it says the text color, right? And what we want to do here is, like it says, change it, hard set it to, to uh, number dot zero zero. So number zero zero zero, enter. And that changes everything to black. Okay. That's the first one. Okay, specify a components column. You must edit the components XML directly, which was what I was just doing, right? Switch to the XML view and then locate where it says text view element with the Android ID attribute so that it has the value of 10 text view, this one. In the text views opening XML tag, add the following attribute, Android colon layout underscore column equals to one. So this is inside the attribute. Remember how you do XML. If you remember XML, you have these brackets, right? These uh, less than, greater than brackets, right? Just like we do uh, HTML, and you put the, the attribute information in here, right? So when you go back in there, try that out. So go into the, the text view that says 10 text view and change the, um, add, a, uh, add this following attribute to the value pair, Android colon layout underscore column is equal to one. I'll leave this up for a second while you guys try and do that. See that? You good? So what that means is, if I go back, if I go to my XML view, so it's 10 text view, right? What is it? 10 text view, right? This one here. So if I, if I look and try and find that one, so here's my bill edit text. I'm looking from the top, right? And here's my 10 text view. And inside this little bracket in here, I want to add another value, right, at the bottom, right? And I'm going to start typing Android colon, right? And what is it again? Help me out so I don't have to switch back. What is it? Column like this? Yeah. One. Right? Let's see the effect of that that it has. So you see what it does up here is our text view, 10 text view. And that's what it's done. It's kind of put it so that it has one, it takes up one column. Okay, let's try the next one. Switch back to graphical layout in the visual editor, and then in the outline window, select the three text views in table row one and set the gravity property to center. So the three text rows in table row one and the gravity property has to be set to, to center. So we're going to use the control or command key to do that. So table row one, three text views, command or control. We're, we're going to set the gravity property to center. Do you guys see the gravity property? Well, let me just go back here and show you where the gravity property, if you just click one, right? And see how the gravity property is underneath this thing that says um, text view. So if I go here and here, I wonder if I right click, can I do the gravity property in my, when I, sometimes when you right click, you have a context view that I'll do the the property gravity, uh, the gravity property here as well, but you know what? It's perfectly fine to do one at a time. I can't. I, I mean, again, this is an older uh, kind of guide, so they may have changed certain things in the um, center, right? Okay, there's my property guide. I'm sending them all center to gravity, right? So it says center. Okay, and then the edit text in table row two, table row three, and table row five, and set their gravity property to center. So all the edit text now, two, three, and five. So edit text, I wonder if you can do those all at once, all at once too. No, at least I don't get an option to do that. I don't know about you guys. 
right? So I'm going to go each one individually. Gravity property to center. And actually, you know what? The edit text, is it center or center vertical? So I don't know about you, but I, I don't have that option to go center. Do you have center? Yeah. By itself? Yeah. Hold on. What's going on? Well, I'm just going to type center. How about that? What is it going to do? Kill me? Right? I'm going to do, the, I'm going to do all of them like that. I'm just going to type it in. So I can't seem to select anything here for whatever reason, which is okay. I don't care. I'll, I'll just keep going. Like I said, I'm just going to keep trucking. Keep on trucking, right? Uh, two, three, and five. Okay, two, three. And, and five. It is starting to look better, isn't it? Here's five. Edit text. So I don't have these options for like you do. So I physically type it in. Okay, two, three, and five. Yeah, it is starting to look better on the left-hand side, eh? What do you think? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to save all and continue. Uh, set the size text property to 14 SP, right? The text size property to 14 SP, not the edit text. And it says this reduces the default font size in the edit text. Oh, select all the edit texts and then set the size property, the text size property of 14 SP. So, let's see if I can do that. All the edit text. Does it allow you? Text size property. That's 0 .0, 0 0, but it doesn't allow me to. There's too many different properties, it looks like. So, I guess it's just not allowing it. <clears throat> so, it's text size property to 14 SP. Is that what we said? I'm going to take this value, instead of me typing it in, I'm just going to copy it here. And I'm going to go into each one. Um, two, three, and five. Two, I didn't do for two, okay. Two. And three. Tightening things up, that's for sure. And five. Okay. It's looking better and better. Okay, next. You guys there with me? 14 SP? You must add the spanning attribute directly to the XML layout. So we got to go into the XML tab in the visual layout editor to view the layouts markup. Locate the edit text element with the Android ID attribute that has the value of bill edit text. And in the edit text opening XML tag, right, add the following attribute value pair. Android layout span is equal to three. I'll let you guys do that. Bill edit text. Android layout span is equal to three. We have to go through this this uh, thing together. When we go through it, you'll see that um, I want you to get a feel of how to create a, a UI because you can do the same thing for yourself. It's not just about dragging and dropping, right? All right, so Android layout span is equal to three. And the other one, the seek bar, is Android layout um, <clears throat> span is equal to true two for the seek bar and the bill edit text. So bill edit text. So 
Bill, edit text. Go into my opening attribute, Android layout. I'm going to go here. That's where it says Android layout. What does it say? Span is equal to three. And Android layout span is equal to two for the uh, for the for the uh, what is it? I think is it down here? Edit text text view seek bar. Android Android layout <laughs> layout span is equal to two. Go back to graphical layout for a second. It looks not bad. It's almost there. And I've got this other little thing out here in the in the middle of nowhere, though. Do you guys have that? So I've got some stuff that's still out of whack. It's getting closer. That's all I know. Okay. Switch back to graphical layout, and this is what you should have. It says. In the outline window, select all the text views in column zero, and the second text, the second text view in the last row, right? All the text views, and set the gravity property to right for the text views. And then set the padding right to 5 dp. I'm not sure if you can do that all at once or if you do it separately. Is it separate? It's not closer. It's bigger than the other one. It should be 5 dp. That's for the text views. The text views. Oh, for the text views. Text views should be 5 dp. Well, this is for the edit text. Yeah. I don't change. It's a text view. Okay, this one. Again, I'm going to pull this little exercise up online so you guys can try it at home at one point. How are you doing? Are you doing? You all right? I am stuck. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this. So we're going to go with our graphical layout and we're going to go with the, all the text views and set the gravity to right and the padding right to uh, 5dp. So I'm just going to go back to graphical layout here. Okay, it's so not letting me move. Move, bastards. Okay, here's my text view. And see if I can do all the text views. I wonder if I can do it like this. Um, we used to be able to have more control, right? Layout width, match parent, layout height, other, other properties. Recent text ID, you see gravity, right? Gravity is equal to right. Is that, was that what it was? Gravity right. Let me see. And then the padding right to 5 dp. So do it again. This one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, these are edit text, sorry. That was right. So what are these? Sorry, the gravity right. So other properties, gravity right. That's good. So they're good still. Uh, text view, text view, text view, text view, text view, text view, and the padding right to 5 dp. So right click, other properties. Um, padding. Layout parameters, inherited, there it is. Padding. padding right to 5 dp, right? Padding right to 5 dp. Yeah. So it aligned it a little bit more. Okay. In the outline view window, select the custom text view 
in, in row and table row four and locate the gravity property and click the ellipses button to the right of the properties value to display the list of possible gravity values and check the center vertical value. Right? And now both the right and the center vertical value should be checked. So it says a custom text view in table row four. The gravity value from the ellipses center vertical and uh, and uh, right should both be them, uh, bo both be there. So table row four, custom text view, right? And if I go to sorry, the ellipses. Come on. Mine is like completely broken, guys. <laughs> I love it. Honestly, you know what? I love I love having problems because then it's just I like I love fixing them afterwards, right? Yeah, you know what to do. I'm the same as you guys. I told you. I'm 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 uh, center vertical. I'm the same as you guys. When it comes to that, it's like you know what? We have to work hard to try and, and learn. This is the way we learn. We do things, learn by doing. This is the only way we do it. There is no better way. Okay, um, outline window, select the custom tip text view um, in row four, and then we're gonna do the same thing, center vertical property. Set the gravity properties, only that though. Set the gravity properties center vertical in the custom tip text view. Why would they do that? So it's gotta be the same, basically. So gravity property, gravity property, and the center view vertical, and press OK. Yay. OK, so these are row three, row four. And the outline window, select tech, both text views in table row four, and set their layout height properties to match parent and padding and the padding bottom property to 5 dp so layout height to match parent in the um, the table text views in row four text text views in row four match parent and padding property pad and bottom so both table row four okay Right click. What does it say? Layout height. Layout height properties to match parent. Layout height. Layout height ma match parent. And I want to change the padding bottom to 5 dp. Okay, so right click. Other properties. Inherited from view. Padding bottom to 5 dp. Cool, cool. I'm going to save everything. All right, almost there. In the outline window, select the custom seek bar and select the progress property to 18. So, custom seek bar. Um, we have the progress property to 18. That moves the bar. Okay, and set the uh, padding left and padding right properties to 8 dp. Padding left, padding right to 8 dp. 8 dp, not 9. And 8 dp. And set the padding bottom to 5 dp. Padding bottom. Of course, I don't have a padding bottom, so I'm going to go right click. Other properties, inherited from progress view, from, from view, padding bottom, 5 dp. Yep. And now set the focusable property to false so that when the bar starts, the user changes the seek bar's value, the build edit text still maintains the focus. So, focusable property to false. So, focusable property. Uh, 
to false. There we go. Are you with me in this craziness? You're unsure? Yeah. Almost there. In the outline window, select all the edit text except the bill edit text. All the edit text. Set the focus focusable long clickable and cursor visible to false. So focusable, long clickable, and cursor visible to false in all the edit text. I'll let you guys do that. Give you guys a chance to do it without me speaking. By the way, this has gone on for over an hour, right? Just to give you an idea of how this works, right? Eh? And the people online, they're going to go, You're Tom, your Tom, your video is too long. <laughs> There's not, nothing I can do. Kelly, I apologize in advance if you're still watching. So, yeah, so all the edit text, um, focusable, long clickable, and cursor visible properties to false. All the edit text. Okay. Let's see if I can do this thing. Edit text, edit text, edit text. Edit text, edit text, edit text. And edit text, edit text. Okay. Layout, other properties. Uh, it's going to be here. Focusable to, oh no, sorry, is it focusable? Focusable, long clickable to thing, right? So focusable, other properties, inherited from view, focusable to false. Okay, now I have to, now I have to of course, I have to highlight them again. Because it's not good enough that I did it once. And there we go. And no, uh, no. All right. Right click. Other properties. What is it again? Long clickable. I can't remember what they are. Um, other properties. Inherited from view. Long clickable to false. Okay. And the last one. Oh, hey. I didn't have to click away for that one. And the last one is the cursor to false. Cursor visible to false. Right click, other properties, inherited from view. Is it there? No. Uh, other properties, inherited from text view, cursor visible to, uh, to false. Let's just check to see if that other one took it. Took. And it takes view, other properties, inherited from text view. Long clickable is what I did last. See, it didn't, didn't take the long clickable one. Man, long clickable. Let's do that one again. This didn't take for me. Are you frustrated yet? Yes. <laughs> it's very frustrating for me as well. Um, I'm not trying to frustrate anybody. I swear to God, right? But I want you to have, this is the, the exercise here is to try and understand all the different uh, properties we need to change uh, to make this one Android application that's a calculator work. Okay. Long clickable, long focusable. Uh, cursor visible to false. Okay, set the layer weights of various components. Here we go. Um, by default, all the components have a layer layout weight of zero. Each component's layout weight determines how it should be sized relative to other components. In this layout, we set layout weight to 1 for all the components except the text views in the left column. Okay. So that's for, let me say the layout weight of each one to 1 except for the text views in the left column. Can we do that? This is the last thing we have to do? Come on. Are you kidding me? And that's done? Layout weight of everything to one except for the 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 left column. Okay. Um. 
Okay, except for this layout column, everything else is one. So if I go to this first layout column right here, I'm just going to see what it is. I'm going to see which ones they are. It's the first one. So total, so all the first ones. So everything else is, is a weight of one. So it's basically the second, and each of these is columns inside the table row. So ba 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 bum, ba bum ba bum ba bum, ba bum ba bum ba bum, ba bum ba bum, bum ba bum ba bum, and it says, what is it? What's it called? Layout weight of zero. Okay, right click, other properties, layout layout weight goes to one. Hey, I actually see everything now, huh? How about you guys? Does it look good, really? It looks like crap. Now, it says I have nine plus issues. When you define padding right, you should probably also define padding left, it says, right? It says fix hard coded string bill total. I can fix all this stuff, right? I can fix, I can fix. Use end instead of right to, to, to ensure correct behavior and right to left layout. Look at this. No label views point to this text field with an Android label of this. Show. Maybe this is my problem. No label views point to this text field with an Android <coughs> label for equals to build text. <coughs> Line 26. That's a funny thing, man, how these things work out. Build I'm going to see if I fix the issue, what happens? Build total, build total. If I can fix these issues. Hard coded build total fix. So what's the problem? Fix. I'm just gonna take some of these away. I love Android. I love Android. <laughs> I'm being facetious. <laughs> what was that? Mm-hmm. Me too, brother. Me too. I'm just gonna go sort through this stuff right now. And custom seek bar.
R Java. I should never be touching R Java. This is one of those stupid errors again. Did you? How'd you do it, man? How'd you crash your clips? I want to know. Mm -hmm. And then put the A to Z so that I could show, it would show all the properties of the event, like organize alphabetically for some reason it doesn't. And then I click text alignment and center and hit OK. Tools, ignore hard coded. <laughs> All right, string 10% should use string resources. Fix. Yes. We'll see if I can fix these things. Show, still shows 9 plus. <laughs> fix. I'm just fixing all my problems here. Fix. Suppress issue. Fix. It's just adding um, strings. That's what it's doing automatically. I want to kind of kill some of these things, right? Errors, these are just warnings. Like, I don't have to um, look at it, it's just that's pain in the ass. Doesn't really fix anything though. I'm not happy with that. Really? Yeah, I guess when it crashed. It really crashed? You just disappeared. You just left with like the console and snippets. I love it. Cleaning some of these errors up. And the other ones I'm just suppressing. No label points to the text field with an Android of thing of this. It's not interesting. Let's see if I can fix something easier here. Hey, all my all my errors are gone because I suppressed them. <laughs> um, so it's interesting. It, at least it put everything in line. This is what it did. It put everything in line, lined everything up, um, so it does everything. Now, I, I, for the life of me, I can't fix anything because in my build, I have this error, the same silly error that I got before, right? That's why, you know, when I did that one drag and drop, it messed me totally up, like completely, 100%. It messed me up. And I can't even drag and drop my, uh, my stuff anymore. Look at what it says here. 
aborting build, our Java was modified manually, referring to a, gener a generated version. I love it. Hmm? Tell me. Here, yeah. And then? This one? Double click? Ah, silly. And it didn't do it automatically for us? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good with that, man. I'm, I'm like yeah, yeah. totally good with that. Are Very you kidding me? Like, that is like, that is like, cool. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Okay, come on, pull down. All right, won't pull down anymore. Doesn't like me anymore. Okay, I'm going to save everything and try and run this puppy the way it is in the view and just take a chance. Should I take a chance? Should I take a chance? What's going to happen? I'm going to run my Eclipse in my thing. Runs. I'm running my Nexus 5. Right? And see if it runs. I don't know. Huh? Hey, man. Stop with the updates. I want no updates. I'm running with what? I'm not even running with Kit Kat, man. I'm running with Jelly Bean right now. Everyone's going to run with Jelly Bean from now on. That's it. No more Kit Kat. Um, and no more anything else. 540. Um, I think we're going to end it off here for today. But what I want to show you is, I'm gonna, and again, I'm going to put up that other presentation again so you can try it again on your own. Um, I'd like you to try it because if you know how to do this, this, this uh, thing again, the advantage to this is you'll have one step, you'll be one step closer to creating your own layout, right, when it comes to uh, building your, your BMI calculator. So let's see if this uh, actually finishes building. And then hopefully I'll get there before the people online are ready to kill me with this two-hour video. Which, by the way, I'll probably split up. And I'll call it like part one, part two, or whatever it's going to be. Because it's madness to, to be so long. Craziness. So I'm going to stop my video now. but And we'll, um, I'll say adieu to the people online. Because as I'm waiting for this, is just too crazy. But at least my tip calculator, my UI, is what we built.